The idea here would be you have these two blocks that are connected by a string and we're going to figure out the rate at which the system accelerates. Well, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, choose um, positive directions for the system. And so clearly this object is going to um, get pulled downward by gravity. And so the, the three kilogram block is going to move downward and the four kilogram block is going to move to the left. And so for that reason, I've chosen uh, these as my positive directions uh, for the system. And what you, the reason you're, you're going to want to do that is whatever value of acceleration you get for the three kilogram object downward, that same numerical value, the magnitude of it, will be the same value as you'll get for the four kilogram mass moving to the left. So you're going to want to choose those positive directions. Uh, next, what we're going to do is look at each object by itself. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at, well, mass one first, which is going to be the four kilogram mass, and then mass two, which is the three kilogram mass. So looking at mass one, all the motion is going to be horizontal for that mass. And so I'm going to set, use F equals MA in sort of the horizontal direction. And what we need to do is look at, well, what are the forces, horizontal forces on mass one? And the horizontal force is going to be the tension from this rope. Um, ropes can only pull. So where the rope attaches to this mass, to the four kilogram mass, it's just going to pull to the left. And so the only horizontal force acting on the four kilogram mass is that tension. Now here there's a huge pitfall. What students will do sometimes is they'll say that, oh, it's really just the weight of this three kilogram mass, this mass two, pulling down that makes the four kilogram mass move to the left. So they'll make the mistake of saying that the force that accelerates the four kilogram mass um, is the weight of mass two. And that's not true. The force that acts on the four kilogram mass is the tension in this rope that's directly connected to it. All right, so do not say that the tension is equal to the weight of this uh, three kilogram block. And so applying F equals MA correctly to mass one, we have tension as the force, and then we simply set that equal to M1A because we are talking about mass one. If we now move on to mass two, all the motion of forces along mass two are vertical, and mass two experiences this vertical motion. So we're just going to apply F equals MA in the vertical direction on mass two. Well, so let's look for those forces that act on mass two. Well, you have the weight of mass two downward and you have the tension on mass two pointing upward. Now, clearly tension is not equal to the weight because if it were, then mass two wouldn't even accelerate downward. So uh, M2G, the weight of mass two is larger than the tension. And so if we correctly apply F equals MA to mass two, we'll get M2G minus T is M2A. Now M2G is taken as positive because I've chosen downward as the positive direction. And tension pointing upward in the negative direction for mass two, um, well, that's the reason why the tension here carries the negative sign. So you have M2G minus T is M2A. It is not T minus M2G. And that is because T is not acting in the positive direction when we're talking about mass two here. And so that's why it looks like this. So now the physics is actually correctly set up. It's really gonna become just an algebra problem after this. And so what we're supposed to do here is find the acceleration of the system. You can see we have two equations for two unknowns. We have T equals M1A where unknowns are T here and A. And then we have another equation here relating T and A. So at this point, it's just become an algebra problem. All I'm going to do is substitute M1A in for T. And so we're just going to do some algebra here below this dotted line. All I've done is substituted M1A in for T. And so now what we're going to do is just solve for A. Um, so to do that, I would just add M1A to the other side um, and then divide out the coefficient of the A. And what you get is the acceleration is M2 over m2 plus m1 times g. And so by leaving it like that in terms of symbols, you can kind of tell that you're likely to have done it right because you get the acceleration is just a ratio of masses um, times the acceleration due to gravity. And so if you want to just plug in numbers to get an answer, what you'll see is it's three sevenths of g.
is the rate at which this thing would accelerate downward. Um, and then if you plug in, say, 9.8 meter per second squared for g, you'll get about uh, 4.2 meters per second squared. Um, now, final little reminder, um, don't say, well, wait, isn't g negative here? The thing is, you've already taken account of the fact that gravity acts downward um, when you said m2g minus t is m2a. Um, so it's really a bad habit to say that this constant g is negative 9.8. Don't do that. Just say that g is 9.8 well, or 10, depending on what your physics teacher wants you to do. Um, but uh, in my humble opinion, it's a bad habit to have g itself carry a sign. Um, so that's a general approach for looking at how this thing is going to move. Let's take a look at one more example. So this example, this is a situation called an Atwood machine. You just have a, um, a light, like massless pulley um, it, with a, uh, um, a heavier mass on one side than the other. Well, so as we did, and the goal here would be to find the acceleration of the system. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll choose our positive directions like we did before. Um, the six kilogram mass is going to go down, so I'm going to choose as it's as a positive direction for it. I'm going to choose downward, and mass one is going to move up. I'm going to choose a positive direction going upward. That way, whatever I find for a for the acceleration, let's say the six kilogram mass, it will it will numerically equal the excel the upward acceleration of the three kilogram mass. If you choose positive down for both masses, then unfortunately the, the value you get for A of the six kilogram mass would have a different sign from what you'd get from the three kilogram. So just choose positive down for the six and positive up for the three, and then the acceleration will come out positive for both of these objects. Um, so let's go for it. We'll do as we did last time. We'll just look at each mass independently. So here's mass one moving vertically, and we'll do F equals MA on mass one. Well, so what are the forces on mass one, the three kilogram mass here? Well, we have gravity acting downward, the weight of mass one, and we have tension uh, pulling it upward. Um, again, ropes only pull. If we're talking about mass one, the rope attaches here, so it's going to pull it upward. And so correctly applying F equals MA to mass one, we would have T minus M1G, um, tension upward minus the weight downward equals M1A. Um, and then if we go over to mass two, um, we can look at the forces on mass two. You have the weight of mass two downward and tension pulling upward. Again, ropes can only pull. So where it attaches to mass two, it pulls upward. And so correctly applying F equals MA to mass two, we would get M2G minus T is M2A. Now the deal here is notice M2G is positive that's because it is acting in the positive direction for mass two, all right? So you really wanna be careful here is a huge pitfall that students will fall into. You do not wanna say T minus M2G on the left here for mass two, all right? T is in the negative direction um, as far as our sign convention for mass two, the motion mass two. Well, so once again, the physics is really done. We just now have an algebra problem because we have um, an equation on the left that has T and A as unknowns and an equation on the right for mass two that has T and A as unknowns. And so really it's just a matter of doing some algebra now, the physics is really done. Um, so under this dotted line, we'll do a little bit of algebra. Um, what I've done here is I've solved the left equation for T. So T would be uh, M1G plus M1A if I move this M1G over to the right. And so knowing that T is just M1G plus M1A, I've just substituted that in for T. So that's what's in the parentheses here. Um, and then all that's left really is to just solve for A. So what I've done next is I've grouped the terms together that have G in them. So you'd have M2 minus M1 times G. That comes from these first two terms. Um, the last term with M minus M1A, I've kicked that over to the other side. So the right-hand side would be M2 plus M1 times A. And then finally, we're just going to solve for A by dividing this um, coefficient of the A over to the other side. And so when the smoke clears, you get that the acceleration is M2 minus M1 over M2 plus M1, um, and then all of that times G. So you get a ratio of masses times an acceleration times G. And then if we plug in some numbers here, um, 
M2 minus M1 would be 6 minus 3, which gives you 3. And M2 plus M1 would be 6 plus 3, which would give you 9. So the acceleration would be 3 ninths of the acceleration due to gravity, or one third of it. Um, and then if we just use uh, G equals 9.8, um, we'll get about 3.27 meters per second as the rate at which this thing would uh, accelerate downward. And then, of course, if you're using 10 for G, you'd get 3.33 instead. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. This is just a general approach for um, solving a couple simple systems. There are some ways to have done both of these problems by looking at applying F equals MA to the system as a whole, but your physics teacher is really likely trying to get you to build up the skill of looking at individual masses and applying F equals MA directly to individual masses. So I hope that helps and thank you for tuning in.